whichever restaurant whatever kind of food he makes right it's mm. one of it's always like my f- favorite well here we are at abhijit's restaurant it's at jagriti theater here in whitefield Chef, congratulations! Thank you, thank you, Kripal. This is the real Sardo pizza, wood fired, and I can give you the promise of best pizza in town. Plus, we are trying to use ingredients which are healthy and also pesticide free. So that is what makes this special food that does not only taste good but is also good for your health. This is the chocolate decadence. Decadence, yeah. Ah. Hi, folks. It's a Saturday afternoon, and uh, we are on our way to Whitefield because the boss is here, and uh, we are on our way to lunch. Whitefield is not a place that we drive out to too often. From Koromangla, it feels like a lifetime getting there. But today is a Saturday afternoon. The traffic isn't that bad. So we're on our way to our dear friend Abhijit Saha's new restaurant. So are you looking forward to lunch? Yes, because I love Abhijit Saha's food. Mm. And uh, whichever restaurant, whatever kind of food he makes, right? It's, mm. it's one of it's always like my favorite foods. So yes, Chef Abhijit Saha is not just a friend, but also one of our favorite chefs. Uh, we've had many a great meals at uh, many of his restaurants that he's set up, helped set up over the last uh, many years that we that I know him. I think I know him at least for about 20 odd years. You've also seen him in some of our vlogs. More recently, we were on the judging panel of the World Filter Coffee Championship at the World Coffee Conference. Uh, prior to that, we also did a vlog with him uh, at the 080 Lounge at Bengaluru Airport that he helped set up. So although it's going to take us about nearly an hour to get there but I'm sure that the food that we taste there will be interesting. So therefore I thought I'll take the camera along and also capture this in a bit of a vlog for you to savor as well. Well here we are at Abhijit's restaurant it's at Jagriti Theater here in Whitefield. Chef, congratulations! Thank you, thank you, Kripal, on this beautiful space. Thank you, Kripal. Welcome to life. Fantastic. The restaurant looks lovely. I'm so glad that you like it. This certainly has uh, Chef Abhijit Saha's signature touch. We have worked hard on it, and we have tried to make sure that it is an enticing place and looks good and has a good ambiance, of course. So, what's life all about? So, life is a restaurant based on. Uh, you know farm to fork and sustainable dining and uh, it is almost like a collective so we have uh, the main restaurant which is like which has primarily european cuisine with some mediterranean and asian accents then we have decadence which is uh, the bakery and patisserie okay. we make a lot of desserts cakes different kinds of sardo bread then we have a cafe which okay. is called bean to tea which serves coffee a lot of snacks and you know bakery products to people who go to the theater and it's an alfresco style cafe okay. where you can come and sit and grab a coffee anytime with some lovely snacks and desserts as a part of life we also have the wood fired pizzeria this is the real sardo pizza and it is napolitan style wood fired and i can give you the promise of best pizza in town so you're back to doing your own restaurant now yes this huh? is my first restaurant post covid okay uh, it has been a lot of hard work okay. and blood and sweat of course is uh, always involved in the making of a restaurant correct. but the idea is to for the customers to have a great time enjoy the food enjoy the ambiance fantastic yeah. what's the food going to be about so there is seasonality involved there are local farmers involved we have also some farms that we have collaborated with in uti uh-huh. and in kunur and that area so we are getting some of our stuff from there plus we are trying to use ingredients which are healthy and also pesticide free so that is what makes this special food that does not only taste good but is also good for your health
also we are in a not in a very typical location if you can see the interiors it looks almost like a house we also have shruti's uh, store which is uh, you know for our candles and for her artisanal uh, china ware these are all done with hands it's called either or this is the indoor space and this is the heart of the dining area uh, uh, we have a kitchen here which is uh, a semi show kitchen so you can probably you know interact with the chefs also if you want to we just got our wine license yesterday oh, what a great to have you here thank you so we i think i some... selected the right time to come here exactly huh? exactly we have some good wines and the wine menu is going to be very very integral and an important part of our offering here uh, so we want to make this as a wine hub huh. and of course uh, there is some exciting coffee options also so uh, different kinds of coffees that we serve here the kitchen garden is just in the process of coming up we have planted some herbs like the basil uh, the rosemary uh, sage thyme some tomatoes some chilies it doesn't seem like a typical restaurant it seems like i've come to abhijit some, saha's home which exactly. is converted into a restaurant that uh, is exactly the idea with which we have created this restaurant yeah. we'd love people to come here uh, and you know enjoy uh, every bit of it you know partake all the hospitality the good food the ambiance mm. if you see this lawn also we have created mm. this is not meant for seating it but someone wants to take a walk uh, you know uh, removing their shoes and you know feeling mm. the grass so it's it's wonderful so this is your pizzeria yes i can see this is a true labor of love like most of your projects most of the things that you do uh yeah so i think you know food and restauranting is uh, more about passion also it's about something from your heart we can run restaurants which are commercial and there are obviously commercial aspects to it uh. we would definitely like more and more people to come here uh. but there has to be a soul behind whatever you're doing in a restaurant and this is a typical example of a restaurant with a soul So this has been to tea. Uh, it's a cafe, huh. as you know. It is attached to the theater here, oh, Jagriti okay. Theater. So Wonderful. people can come here and you know grab some tea, coffee, soft beverages, some mocktails, and you have uh, you know wraps. You have Mexican style wraps. You have panini. You have brownies. You have quiche. You have chocolate. You have pastries. You have croissant. Then we also have some nuts, cookies. I thought life was one restaurant but after coming here I realized life is not just a restaurant I think it's a collection of spaces and each one has its own unique identity and I'm sure all of them do some great food so whether you want to eat like something fine dining whether you want to have a pizza whether you just want to have some Snack. coffee yeah. uh, you know a salad maybe a sandwich or just a cookie yes you can do that here at life yes that was the idea to create variety of food for different kind of experiences <laughs> food lovers food lovers <laughs> so i have uh, been able to you know keep a collection of almost all of the copies of food lovers because this is the way that you know people in bangalore earlier used to know about restaurants good food and you know it was a, a magazine as well as the awards you know that was a very very great experience for the industry to celebrate and of course we had the special yes edition which was with the that's the watermelon of, carpaccio yes watermelon carpaccio well before food lovers tv that was the avatar that uh, food love was manifested in in the form of this magazine i think we made a beginning in 2006 and that's when I think me and Chef Abhijit Saha began working together. That's 2004, 2005. It's a journey. Twenty years. It's such a memorable journey <laughs> that we've had together. Uh, food lovers was our <laughs> place to go to in terms of being a chef and you know expressing ourselves as a and reaching out to our guests. Fantastic. Well, life takes its own turns, and here we are. Happily so after 20 years I had Chef Abhijit Saha's newest creation life Kale fox tail and apple salad fantastic This is 
is a mushroom pizza. Okay. It's got some truffle oil in it. It's got uh. olives. It's got a variety of mushrooms, including shiitake, uh, button, and oyster mushrooms. It's a sardo pizza. Base is made from 100% sardo. So there is no yeast added to this. It's a salad made with coconut crusted prawns, and we have the raw papaya. The vegetables uh, and Asian style. Oh, didn't you have this as well, uh, or a version of this somewhere? Somewhere we obviously used kale, but we didn't combine mm. it with apple and millets necessarily. We had a different combination. So kale is becoming very popular as a salad. It's raw papaya, it's raw right? Papaya. Has a crispy prawns. Thank you. So this also has some uh, bulgur wheat, is it in this? No, foxtail, foxtail millet. Foxtail millet. Ah. Thank you. The foxtail millet has a nice crunch. So this is like a somtam, right? Yeah. But it's got pineapple. It's got, mm. you know. I can definitely feel the spice of that. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. What do you use? Some bird chili in that? Yeah. So of course we also, along with Chef Abhijit Saha, we also have his better half, Shruti. Hi. And it's been a while since we've caught up with uh, Shruti as well. Mm. There's a bit of sweetness in this, no? Because it's coconut and coconut milk. Coconut and coconut milk is in the prawn batter. You have the desiccated coconut. Mm. And the coconut milk. I can also taste a bit of that coconut. Yeah, yeah in that crunch. And I think that desiccated coconut also adds that sweetness, right? With that crunch. Yeah, yeah. What do you call this pizza, chef? Yeah, this is the mushroom mm. pizza. We call this the essence of Alba. Mm. So there is different variety of mushrooms in it. There's truffle oil. Yeah, I can definitely taste the truffle oil right there. There's some jalapeno. Yeah, and there is some like feta cheese in it. What I like is the strength of the bread. The pizza base. Yeah. This pizza base certainly has a certain lightness to it. It's very it's very crunchy. It is. So you just got your wine license? Yes, we did yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> and we were I got 20 minutes precisely. Uh, to procure the wines. So wow. our first lot of wines have come in. Uh, so we have around uh, 30 varieties of wines that I've already picked. First drop of wine being poured. I know. At light. <laughs> Congratulations. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you very much. The kind of food that we serve here requires some good wine. <laughs> Correct. And the experience will be definitely much better yeah. with this. Cheers. 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 Good luck. Thank you. Sweet, right? It's like a demi sec. Slightly higher on the sugar. Pasca Prosecco. It's named after the Audrey Hepburn. Really? Yes. <laughs> so we have the duet of vegetarian and non vegetarian dim sum. Okay. For the non vegetarian, we have the chicken shumai and we have the prawn hargao. Fantastic. And for the uh, vegetarians, we have two dumplings, which is water chestnut and broccoli, and truffle, mushroom, and edamame. So, this is my shui mai yeah. and the hargao. Hargao, yeah. Lovely. How, what do you stain the hargao skin with? This is with the red cabbage. Burnt chili sauce. Yeah. And we have the coriander salsa. Do you have some shiitake in this? Yeah. Now let's taste the shui mai. So what's the green thing in the shui mai? Carrot and spring onion. Carrot and spring onions. Yeah. Mm. Very juicy, very moist inside. Yeah. So this is a prawn hargao, chef. Yes. Mm. 
Also, there's a certain uh, savory saltiness in that. Yes. What is that? A little bit of soy sauce mm. as well as the flying fish roe. Risotto is taking me back to memories of uh, Capaberry. Yeah. Yes, uh, that's right. Risotto has been a you know signature dish of mine. I learned it way back when I started cooking first uh, at the Orient Express, then at Italia, then of course we continued it with fava and Capaberry. Uh, uh, and now here we have it at life. It's risotto. a mushroom risotto. It's got multi grains in it. So we use nowadays multiple grains. Uh, so. Arborio and Carnaroli we definitely use, which are the classics. Uh. Then we also use black rice, we use barley, we use different kinds of millets. Uh. Uh, so we use uh, shorgum, uh, we use even, you know, barnyard millet or for that matter, foxtail. Uh, foxtail millet. So all of that we use. Goes into a risotto. Yeah, it goes into a risotto, but it depends on what risotto we are preparing. So different risottos have different recipes that we have created. What about this fish? So this is a sea bass. Depending on the day, we have a choice of fish as our baramundi, uh, which is an Asian sea bass. Then we have the sea bass. So there is the leeks and we have the ginger orange sauce and we have the palm leones. So what's the green uh, rub on it? Mm. It is the picada. Spanish picada. Yeah. I think the sea bass as a fish, what I like is its texture, mm. no? Mushroom risotto. Of course, you can also taste some of the remnants of the crispy skin. Yeah. I'm sure when it came right out, it was crispy. Yeah, it so these potatoes also have some onions in that, right? Yeah. And butter. Palm leones come from France. Correct. So, so the French love the, butter in everything. Yeah, yeah. Butter is the ingredient for them. They do love their butter, but they're using olive oil with equal vigor. But I think what's nice is that the orange helps cut some of that, right? Richness mm. with the acidity. The citrus orange sauce. Yeah. What's this yellow? Or this? That's a citrus orange sauce. Citrus of course, we're sharing the food here because we're tasting multiple dishes. But when you visit, the fish will be presented to you in the manner that you saw on the full plate. Very nice. I really enjoyed that fish. I'm glad, Kripal. Very nice. Thank you. So, Chef, I remember this risotto. I think we've shot it also. So, you used to do it with that. Was it like a sliver of cheese on top? Yeah. Right? That's it. Mm. So, this risotto is cooked in white wine. We do add some white wine now that we have the wine license. Chef, there's sushi also. Yeah, so this is uh, something that has become very popular of late in India. Uh -huh. And everybody loves their sushi, including my kids. So if I want my kids to come to my restaurant, I better have sushi. We have only three selections for vegetarians and non-vegetarian. It comes in a platter. Uh, so we have the California roll. Uh -huh. uh, which is with the crab stick and avocado. Then we have the nigiri sushi, which uh -huh. is with the tuna. And we have the Boston uramaki with the prawns. That is togarashi and this is the uramaki. The so uramaki with the tobiko. Uh, you know, tobiko on the top. Yeah. So we have crept the horizons and the boundaries a little fluid. Uh, so, so you could be you know, using the same ingredient mm -hmm. from a particular farm to make a dish which is European in style or Asian flavors or has a Mexican or a Latin American flavor. So you can do multiple things with the same ingredient. When so we want to keep our boundaries a little fluid. I think I'll go for the, some of the nigiri yes. first. Yes, the right approach. There's a bit of sweetness though in the rice. Why is that? It's from the mirin. Mirin is the rice wine. Rice wine, yeah. Mm. Slight sweet. Slightly sweet, yeah. Yeah. Of okay. course, also I'm sure there's also a dab of wasabi just under the under the tuna. Tuna, yeah. This is the California roll. Yes. With the crab stick. Mm -hmm. This is the the ebi uramaki. Ebi. Yeah, uramaki. Yeah. I think somewhere I feel there's a tobiko that I would taste like years ago, mm. the flying fish roe. I think it's the potency of its fishiness, no? That 
it gives you that slight pop of fishiness that has come down over the years. It seems that if you would not be told you in a blind know. tasting that there is a fishy flavour to it. You wouldn't even know, right? Mm. Chef, what are these desserts? Uh, so, we have a rendition of lemon. Okay. There's got different textures of lemon, you know, you have got lemon curd, you've got lemon mousse, it's crunchy, it's creamy, it's got the citrus flavour. So, you should feel that you are, you know, biting into a lemon. There's a chocolate decadence. To cut the chocolate, there's a citrus orange sauce added to it and then we have a chocolate truffle with it. So, uh. it's like a real chocolate dessert for chocolate lovers. Are you sure you're not going to have any dessert? Not right now. You can have. There won't be any <laughs> remaining. Nobody, you it is not easy to uh, uh. break about a dessert like this. So, but we will try. Uh. And here you go. And I'd like to cut it here. Fantastic. So, as you can see the, oh. the lemon curd and the lemon mousse inside. Fantastic. So, what is the one in the center there? That is the lemon curd. That's the lemon curd and this is the lemon mousse. Mousse, yes. And in a white chocolate shell. Yes, that's right. And that? That is the fayatin with a lemon sponge. Get some of the lemon. And? The lemon sponge. The lemon sponge. Oh, I'm looking forward to tasting this. It's nice, huh? You know, what's nice here is that the intensity of the lemon too, like for example, the mousse is very light, right? You can barely register. Do you also no. use a bit of the rind somewhere? Yeah, we do. So you can barely register, but with the lemon curd, you yeah. can sense the full potency, full potency of, it, of the yeah. lemon. Yeah. So you can't make it too sour. At the same time, you know, it should not be too sweet. So you have to have that flavor, the essence and the aroma of the lemon. Uh. And at the same time, it should be a dessert. So this is the for your theme. Mm. Yeah. So, there's some cereal in that, some crispies. Yeah. Like a rice crispy or something like that. Yeah. Mm. And nice, no? The sponge is like a moist lemon cake. There's lemon some brine that yes. I taste detect in that. Yes. There's a bit of the bitterness yes. that comes through that. Yes. Mm, very nice. A lemon is also a great way of cleansing your palate. Palate, yeah. Right, but sometimes the acidity of lemon can be a bit too much. Too much, yeah. So here, of course, because there's also the dairy that goes into it. Yes. So that cuts that acidity and what's nice is that you can taste that lemon in varying degrees. Hmm. So I'm sure there's a bit of a sauce here. Yes. And I'm sure that probably has a little more... More lemon. Sweetish. Mm. This is the chocolate decadence. Decadence, yeah. Ah, uh, so what is the fruit in that? Orange. Ah, so there's orange inside even. Wonderful. And then there's an orange sort of a sauce. Sauce, yeah. Mm. It's a reduced orange, so you can yeah. taste the potency of it. Yeah. What chocolate do you use in this? So we use the uh, Calibu as the mm. chocolate. So, see, this is so good. You must try this. You must seriously try it. Very good, chef. So you have the, you know, richness of the chocolate, and then you have the acidity to cut it. So basically, it balances out the desserts in a very good way. Because when there's something like chocolate involved, you can very easily overdo it. Yes. But out here, so for example, when I look at this, be it in terms of the texture of the mousse, richness of that chocolate cake, which is a little dense. Yeah. And then the orange and bits of that orange rinds. Melange of yeah. flavors. The manner in which it's coming together, together also is brilliant. Yeah. yeah. Just when you feel that you had a bit more of the chocolate. Yeah. Then the orange the, the kicks orange in. Yeah. Kicks in yeah. mm. <laughs> and, the, and the rind gives it that the orange, uh, the oil, the essential oil yeah. from the orange, okay. you know. That's got that sharp flavor. Very good. So, Apple it's a mix of all of that. Excellent. Well, yes, so that was lunch at Chef Abhijit Saha and Shruti Saha's new restaurant, Life. Uh, we quite enjoyed our time there. Always nice to catch up with them. And I think their food is, uh, is always uh, spot on. Uh, I think Abhijit is great with his, uh, with his European flavors. And also was nice to taste 
a couple of the other Asian dishes too, whether it was the salad, the dim sums, and the sushi platter, and a great pizza. And I love the crust. You know, that crust was uh, what uh, hit the spot for me. The toppings were nice, of course. And uh, so, yes, we enjoyed our time there. I also loved the space. I think it doesn't feel like a typical restaurant, but it feels like you've entered Chef Abhijit's home. I think it's quite a charming uh, restaurant. Also, its location in the theatre at Jagriti, the seating, which is a combination of indoor, outdoor, uh, you know, also by the lawn and things like that. I think all that makes that restaurant very special. They also have a cafe. Uh, they know they get, uh, you get to have some nice uh, cafe and paninis and all that. So it's a combination of different spaces and I think that's really what uh, life is all about. Uh, I love the desserts too. I think the desserts, both the desserts, whether it was the, the textures of lemon or the renditions of lemon, and also the chocolate decadence. Both of them were absolutely fabulous. I would drive back just for those. Also the sea bass that we tasted, the risotto too was fantastic. So uh, we're on our way back to Koromangala now, but we'll definitely return to savor some more of uh, the food here. And uh, I think you should too. If you're around in this part of Bengaluru, well, it's easy. Uh, but if you are from other parts of Bengaluru, I think uh, the food that you will taste there and the experience that you'll enjoy here, I think will make the drive uh, worth your while. So that's it for this vlog. I hope you enjoyed this um, chilled out sort of an afternoon. Uh, and we'll see you on the next one. Bye.